Hello and welcome to part two of Death Versus Heard, More to the Story. If this is the first time you've landed on my three-part video on Death Versus Heard, please be sure to go to part one first. Thank you. Io Tillett Wright has repeatedly stated that he dialed 911 after his call to Amber Heard disconnected. For the purpose of this video, I want to display legal credibility that rightfully permits the evidence that Mr. Tillett Wright has delivered concerning his agreement to produce the books, documents, records, electronically stored information, and tangible things designated and described below. Everything you're about to hear or see is officially credible among public records, given that we're currently post-trial. Tillett Wright has published phone records relating to the 911 call. The problem is this, along with other testimonies, have indicated that this has been a fraudulent display of the truth. A witness testimony that disproves this is Raquel Pennington's, also known as Rocky, who evidently is a source that is coming from Amber Heard's own network, rather than a source supportive towards a Johnny Depp preferred narrative. This strengthens the accuracy of this source and rejects the possibility of partiality and bias evidence. He testified that on the night of May 21st, she, quote, received a text message from Amber at approximately 8.06 p.m., end quote, and, quote, immediately went over to Amber's place, end quote. She claims that it took her under a minute to get into Penthouse 3, placing her at Penthouse 3 at around 8.07 p.m. This is what we know according to all three testimonies. Io's call to 911 occurred sometime after the text to Raquel, but before she entered the penthouse. This indicates that Io's phone call would have occurred between 8.06 to 8.07 p.m., approximately around the time Rocky entered Penthouse 3. But according to Io's phone records, he made the call at 11.16 East Coast time, which is 8.16 West Coast time, 8.16 and 59 seconds, which suggests that Io did not make the 911 call for another 10 minutes. There's also a tweet where Io claims to have made the 911 call after the call with Amber Heard disconnected. Aside from the timing consistency, this statement is also false. This wasn't the first call Io made. Before then, we see that he called Amber Heard twice and Raquel once. No one testified that the 911 call was made at all. In fact, it had never been claimed or mentioned outside of the scope of the legal credibility. Io, Amber, and Rocky all testified that only Io made a 911 call that night. There was a second 911 call that was submitted as proof for the temporary restraining order. Part of Io's tweet asserts a name for the mystery caller, Lauren, who Io claimed to have called that night anonymously. Lauren is Lauren Shapiro, a good friend of Io's who is based in San Francisco, who he made a call to according to his phone records. Shapiro has been subpoenaed in the case, also represented by Anya Goldstein, who happens to be the same attorney that Heard provided to her other witnesses. If I was in fact claiming Lauren Shapiro as Lauren, as known as the anonymous caller, which I will disprove, this is also a lie. Now here are the lies that were told by the 911 caller. The caller claims that Heard gave her the information over the phone. We're also being told that Io gave her the information. Io's first call gave specific details, such as being assaulted by her husband and her friend was hit with the phone, Quotes, <laughs> details that were clearly verbalized by Heard. But the biggest lie that was given was that if this was in fact Lauren Shapiro, was that she was located inside the ECB at, pen, at the penthouse during the alleged assault. Now, this is what we know. The mystery 911 call was made at 8.27 p.m. We also know that Shapiro was not at the Eastern Columbia building she was with friends at the Hollywood Cemetery screening for Silence of the Lambs, where doors opened at 6.45 p.m. for the 8.30 p.m. screening. This automatically sparked my interest and curiosity. I knew that there was more to the case that had to be solved. 
I checked the legal records of emails of the attorneys, but I wanted to make sure. So I logged into the official website of Brown Rudnick and tracked down contact details of Benjamin Chu and Camille Vasquez and contact them in regards to this issue. There are a lot of sources at play, so I had to be constructive and find the best source available. A better one. A better one? That one. What one? That one. That my best friend. She a real bad bitch, got her own money. She don't need no nigga on a dance floor. She had two, three drinks, now she's working. She throw it out and come back in. Rocky Pennington was the mystery 911 caller. According to Brian McPherson, a YouTube journalist, there is an audio similarity between Rocky's declaration and the 911 call. To avoid copyright infringement, I have edited the recording via TikTok and added in In Tel Aviv by Mona Monroe in the background, um, which is a song that I wrote and produced. Mona Monroe is the name I use for my music. But I digress. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Amber, Amber, Amber. To Amber. A woman. A woman. The original 911 call was made available on the Daily Mail, as Rocky's testimony, which Brian reveals, is available on YouTube. This would place Rocky within the Eastern Columbia building in which she was present at Penthouse 3 shortly after. She testified after the alleged assault the following. Quote, she said... I called the cops, I think. She was on the phone. I yelled at her to call the cops, end quote. Raquel stated, quote, I said, I'm going to verify with Io, and I'm going to check and to see if the cops are on their way, end quote. This proves another lie Amber Heard made when she texted Johnny Depp several days later, claiming that she didn't know why the police came. She also coincidentally claimed that was the only reason why she called her divorce attorney, for guidance, allegedly. <laughs> Pennington testified that she couldn't remember whether she called Io or vice versa. Now, according to Tillett Wright's phone records, he called Pennington at 8.25 p.m., just a few seconds before the second 911 call was made at 8.27 p.m. There was no mention in the testimony of asking somebody else to call 911. This is why Pennington had to pretend to be someone else and remain anonymous. Heard testified that she didn't remember when she called her attorneys. She's a flippin' coward, you know? I mean, she's a Taurus. But I digress, so let's get back to this. Here is a potential scenario of what could have happened in conjunction with the evidence that we already have. After Johnny Depp left Penthouse 3, Pennington, Heard, and Josh Drew, Pennington's boyfriend at the time and ex-husband, got together like the Three Musketeers in Penthouse 1. Johnny Depp told Amber Heard that he wanted a divorce via a text message, which he sent to a good friend of his, claiming that he has butterflies. So Amber Heard gets on the phone with Samantha Spector, who guided her on what needed to happen in order to get the upper hand in the divorce. Heard claimed till Wright was calling the police. Given that it wasn't hard to prove the false assault of the phone being thrown to her face, a phone call between Io and Rocky had to be made in order to discuss this very detail because this was what was reported to the 911 call. The second 911 call was more than likely instructed by Heard, with the likeness of her lawyer, Samantha Spector, to ensure that a second call was made in an attempt to undo the details given in the other 911 call by keeping it extremely vague, simple, and anonymous above all costs. While on the phone with Samantha Spector, Heard, Pennington, and Drew were all instructed to write down what they said had happened so this could potentially be used for declarations. This writing was something that Pennington claimed she had in the first part of her deposition on June 16th, 2016, but goes on to deny it in her second deposition in July 14th, 2016. The police arriving was no surprise. Josh Drew was waiting in the hall to greet them and send them on their way out without seeing Amber, according to Officer Sands' testimony. The motivation behind this was that due to the details being difficult to fake, they had a claim the police arrived due to an assault. Amber Heard was told to talk to them, but not give a statement. The hope was to use the fact that if the police came in order to receive a DVRO, but when the DVRO was applied for, there was no mention that the police came. 
This is because two domestic abuse trained LAPD police officers provided a pair of sworn depositions claiming they saw no evidence of any injuries or crime. Heard, Pennington, and Tell It Right needed something official, but not too detailed, in order to prevent contradictions being made to their own claims. This is why they used the second 911 call, and not both, as proof that an assault was reported and responded to that night. A call that neither Io, Amber, or Rocky have testified to and continue to assert the narrative that only one 911 call was made. I love it.